Righty, hello everybody. Thank you for joining on in. I see a lot of people. Um, we've got 85 people right off the bat, and that's fantastic. As you're all connecting to audio, I am going to share just a quick video to get some hype um, for the precision because it is the 25 year anniversary. I'm sure you've seen um, all the Dell promotions behind it, but without further ado, ado here's a quick video. If that doesn't get you excited for today's presentation, I don't know what else will. Um, I first just want to say thank you for being here. We always appreciate your continued attendance. Um, a lot of the faces in this I recognize from everywhere. Um, so thank you for showing up. Thank you for being here. My name is Jack McMahon. Um, I am here representing the Dell client community. So I'm super, super glad you are here and really appreciate all of the engagement, all of the questions that I know everyone is going to ask. We've got three really exciting presenters today. Um, but before we get into it, I just want to get into some quick reminders. Um, you know, this is a Zoom webinar, so please note that it is being recorded. And to stay on mute while the speakers are presenting, everybody wants to hear what they got to say, and you will have your chance to ask some questions. You can use the raise hand function to ask questions if you want to come off mute, or you can just post your question in, in the chat and we will get to it. Um, as you can see, my camera's on, our presenters will have their cameras on. So if you want to join us being on camera, connecting with your other community members, Go right ahead. If not, I understand. Um, I did do my hair today. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I wanted to make sure I look good for all of you. And then as usual, um, we have a post event survey where you can win a $25 gift card for lucky survey participants. We'll win that $25 Amazon gift card. We really appreciate your feedback and we want to know what we can do better, what you like and what um, topics you want to hear in the future. Next is we want to remind you about some really exciting um, webinars and virtual events that we have coming up. So next week we have workforce personas um, for maximum productivity. We will dive into the different areas of Dell that can help all the different people and personas that you have within your organization really achieve what they need to based on where they are. If they're work from home, if they're hybrid, if they're in the office, this is the webinar for you that you want to hear about the latest and greatest in Dell technology and how we can really maximize the productivity of your company. Um, after that, in September, we have a XPS webinar. So the latest and greatest in XPS, Create Universe. Um, this will be really, really exciting. It is on September 22nd from 12 to one o'clock central time. So if you wanna learn more, I'm sure the links are about to pop in the chat so you can register for those today. And then last but not least on October 20th, um, the Dell client community and the Dell Unified Workspace community is co-hosting an all day long event. It's gonna be really, really fun. We've got some special presenters. So keep an eye out in your email for that. You will hear more and more as the time comes out but this is going to be a very long, exciting, informative event with a lot of partners. Um, we're really, really looking forward to it on our Dell client community side. This is the first of our kind. So we're a little nervous, but also really excited, have some great expectations. And like I said, there will be some special presenters. So uh, keep an eye out in your email and learn more, register. We would love to see you there. And then another reminder, you know, we've sent out the member surveys, you guys have given your feedback, you always want to be a part of beta testing and focus groups and surveys. So if you're interested in that, click on the link um, that might be in chat or scan that QR code and you can apply to be a trusted tester. Um, that process makes you go under NDA. 
and you're able to see the newest and greatest that Dell has to offer before it's at that mass market. So if you really want to be on the inside, in the inside scoop, apply to be a trusted tester. We would love to see you there. It's a really fun program, and you get a little bit of everything. And then without further ado, um, let me introduce our speakers. So we will be kicked off with Alex. Alex is a product management consultant on Precision Workstations and Rugged Notebooks at Dell. Um, he will talk for a little bit, then introduce Joe, who is a product manager at Dell. And then kind of sandwiched in the middle of those two is Albert. Um, he will be kind of the best part of the Oreo with the marshmallow filling right there in the middle. Um, he is a product manager for Precision Workstations and Commercial Graphics at Dell Technologies. So without further ado, Alex, you're up. Take it away. Hey, fantastic. Thank you so much, Jack. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for stopping by and you know coming to this webinar today. I'm so excited to see so many people. Uh, looks like our number of participants now exceeds 140. So that is, that is great. I'm going to share my screen. Um, and um, so, by, again, by looking at the chat, uh, I think that so far Jack's hair has been kind of topic number one. Um, I don't know if I can compete with that, <laughs> but I'll try my best, right? And really excited to have my colleagues, Joe and Albert, uh, on the call today as well. Uh, so August 25th, so this meeting is live, right? This is happening right now. <laughs> and so we um, super excited to come back uh, into this forum and present mobile workstations from what I understand, Earlier this year, you had the fixed workstations presentation, uh, but it's been a while since since mobile workstations were discussed in in great level of detail in this call. So we'll we'll try to not disappoint. We have a lot of great information for you, a lot of wonderful stuff, and of course we always welcome your questions. Um, I believe chat functionality is enabled, right? And um, we would like to understand where you want us to focus, where you want us to take this. Um, I will sort of kick things off by just. Uh, basically, um, kind of highlighting or reminding why we're here to talk about workstation specifically, right? So first of all, you know, it is um, uh, workstations um, that we manufacture, make, uh, make here at Dell, they are um, very, very unique, right? And um, they're very different from uh, some of the other lines of business that we have, you know, as you obviously know, we have Chromebooks, we have just conventional business laptops, we have a whole bunch of desktops here and there. Um, we have gaming um, presence, huge gaming presence with Alienware brand with, with the, you know, G, G5, G7 um, gaming machines as well. But workstations, they are unique. They're very unique, right? Because really when it comes to ultimate productivity, when it comes to ultimate power that, um, an end user might need to achieve when they work in their different projects, um, workstations um, are really what's best positioned to fulfill that need. So anytime you, you know, again, if you're, if you're uh, sort of a customer of, uh, you know, user of uh, one device, or if you represent an organization that maybe has like, I don't know, a hundred or a thousand of these devices deployed, um, when it comes to ultimate performance, there is no better product in our in our humble opinion, I would say. And so of course, when you hear things, you know, key, key phrases like, hey, more processing power. You know, I need better graphics. <laughs> I need scalability, I need reliability. I have need to do some VR related projects, whatever it might be, immediately think precision. And hopefully you will not be disappointed, right? So this is what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, first, um, before I uh, hand things over to Joe, just a kind of a quick, summary of some of the things we're going to go into um, with a little bit more detail later through this presentation. Uh, so for those of you who are, um, who have this, uh, I guess, intimate um, familiarity with the Dell workstation portfolio, you know that historically we've been playing sort of in the, in the several screen sizes, uh, 15s and 17s, and then of course we have our entry workstation products, our uh, thin and light products, but also our performance line you will see that things are evolving at Dell. So first of all, there is a reason for that, obviously. Um, I wanna uh, kind of point your attention to this um, upper right corner here. So 25th anniversary of Precision. I mean, it is indeed, uh, you know, in fact, it's a 25th anniversary for Precision this year. Um, things started in 1997. Um, so we've kind of been building on that legacy, if you will, trying to make sure that every year we can, uh, 
improve our products, right? We can build better, faster, quicker, more reliable solutions so that you can, as users, you can take your projects to the next level, right? And you will see that something that we have not had either ever or for a while, we're actually getting into additional screen sizes. So whereas in the past, we were primarily focused on like 15s and 17s, we um, are now going all the way from 14 to 17. So you have a 14 inch product, uh, 15, 16, and 17, right? So depending on your needs, whether you need a, a bigger screen real estate um, and you need to kind of do multiple windows at the same time, more applications at the same time, to maybe, hey, you're just getting into um, to a, that level where you actually are transitioning from a business product into a, a workstation product, right? And you can get away with the smaller, kind of a lighter device, uh, or whether you plan to travel a lot and you're looking for a thin and light and beautiful, um, beautiful product, right? We have that all. And so we're super excited about some of these changes. So as you can see, portfolio is growing because we are trying to, we don't want to just bring one device and say, hey, it doesn't matter what your use case, you have to be stuck with this product, right? We would like to make sure that we fully recognize your needs and then we can sort of cater the product to those needs, right? And um, yeah, I, I see that there are some great comments here. Um, some great comments here in the chat. Uh, Kevin is talking about the new 7770. Yeah, we'll, we'll go into more detail. And then of course, Nandan has a question about webcam. So Albert, maybe you might have to um, sort of address the, those questions as well, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, we will, we will we'll try to get to those questions. We'll try to get uh, and address those um, those discussions, right? But so I will introduce a couple of my colleagues. So Joe, he's the product manager for Precision um, Entry Products, Precision uh, 3000 series products, right? Um, and then um, Albert, who will take over after after Joe, he's going to talk about the Thin and Light, the five series product. And then I'll guess at the end, I'll sort of come back and I'll bring it home with the deeper dive into the new seven series, specifically the biggest focus in kind of my portion of the presentation, on the on the 76 70 the new 16 inch um that we're so excited to, to to start you know to have started selling just just recently here all right so uh with that being said thank you so much looking forward to all your questions and interacting with you through this presentation uh, and joe please take it away yeah definitely thank you alex for teeing it up for me and thank you jack and kirsten for putting this event together let me go ahead and share my screen just so everyone can see. Um, and welcome to everyone that's joining us today. We're so glad that you're here. Um, we love interacting with our customers. So really today is one of those days we look forward to as a team. Um, as Jack mentioned, and, and as Alex mentioned, my name is Joe, and I am a product manager at Dell for the Mobile Workstation 3000 series. Um, unfortunately, I do have another colleague that partners with me on the 3000 series, and they couldn't be here today. But regardless, we put together some great content. And so we hope that you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed putting it together. To start, I think it's important to consider how we like to think about the 3000 series here at Dell. The 3000 series for us, it really serves as an entry mobile workstation for our customers who are looking for two primary things. The first of which is that they need professional grade performance um, to make sure that the workstation works with the software and programs that they uh, use on a day to day basis. And the second of which is that they need to do this in a cost effective way. So when using a workstation, as I'm sure a lot of you know, one of the biggest concerns is the products themselves uh, getting really hot. So our workstations are equipped with really powerful CPUs and GPUs. And with that, there comes this introduction of the challenge of mitigating thermal output in increasingly smaller devices. So, you know, as time has passed, our devices have gotten smaller, but that heat needs to go somewhere. And so why does that heat matter? Well, for one, it slows down your performance, but then also in the long term, if your device constantly overheats, it could actually shorten the lifespan of a device, which is certainly something you don't want to do. You know, you invest a lot of money into these products and you need them to uh, have a certain longevity. So that's why we're excited about one of the breakthroughs that our Dell engineers have made in the thermal design of precision products, which is the usage of dual opposite outlet architecture. And so that's that's a lot of words there. But if you take a look at the slide, basically, the system itself sucks in air through what you're seeing as the blue arrow, and then it diverts that air through side vents and also back vents. Aside from those improvements, the fan itself also has larger fan blades, and they're also thinner. So it's able to cool the device more efficiently. Um, additional The additional vent openings along with those improvements to the blades allow for a 30% increase in air movement. 
movement. And so for the end user, for you, for the customer, what this translates to is a cooler device. We've all experienced a laptop, you know, sitting on our lap uh, where our thighs just start to get hot or our wrists resting on the palm rest. And, you know, you can feel that heat coming through the machine. So for, for the customer, there's a decrease in, in those type of events happening with this new improved airflow. Another one of the investment areas uh, that we're really excited about is our camera technology. So fans are really cool, right? Uh, pun intended there. But I, I think what's cooler is our new FHD IR camera with a proximity sensor. And so that leads to three primary features. There's the wake on approach and uh, the walk away lock. And so what that means is if your computer is sitting on a surface open with the camera, uh, you know, seeing the environment and you walk towards your device, the device will actually sign you in. And similarly for the walk away, it will sign you out. And so that's great from a convenience standpoint, but the security implications there are also really great for our users that are concerned um, with security. There's also contextual privacy, uh, another feature for security. It, basically, if you're sitting and using your device and um, your camera detects another person peering over your shoulder looking at your screen, you actually be prompted with a notification letting you know that that's happening. It might make for a little bit of an awkward interaction, but regardless, security is at the top of the mind here. Um, and then it'll also make it a bit harder for that person who's peering over your shoulder to actually make out what's happening on your screen. Um, so we think that's really great for, for our users who are taking these smaller devices in the mobile workstation 3000 series on the go, whether you're working at an airport, airport lounge, sorry, you're like a coffee space, really anywhere, you're going to be protected with these privacy features. And then the last one is end user gaze tracking. Um, so this one is simply, let's say you're working on your mobile workstation 3000 and all of a sudden, I don't know, you get a phone call from your significant other, you spend some time on the phone with them, you're looking away from your, uh, from your screen. What will happen is that the screen will actually uh, lower in brightness. And so what happens is that you end up conserving battery time. So those are some really great improve, improvements we've seen in this generation of the Precision 3000 mobile workstation products that we're really excited about. Um, the other key area outside of performance that we have invested in significantly is in our sustainability goals and increasing the amount of recycled and sustainable material in our Precision 3000 products. So we already had a really strong foundation with our last gen of products, but we took it up a notch with this new generation. We moved from just one of the covers um, being made of recyclable plastics up to 71% to all three covers now being included. So, you know, we still have lots of room to get better and, and much of that total body weight is coming from the metals, which is something that we're gonna look towards um, in future generations of products. But this also carries down to the packaging. There are now bulk packaging options to cut down on the number of boxes that our customers receive. Uh, so it used to be in the past, if you ordered, you know, a bunch of uh, precision products, you would get a bunch of boxes. Now we're cutting that down with bulk packaging options. Um, and then we also have premium packaging options, which offer up to 100% of recycled material. Okay, so with that, you know, I'd love to get into the specific products because I think that's where a, a lot of the exciting stuff is. Uh, the latest product is the Precision 3470. And I really wish I had one available to show you all because it truly is amazing. Um, it's amazing to me how much technology we jam packed into this 14 inch product with such a small footprint. Okay, so the question I'm sure on top of everyone's mind is who is this for? We think of this product as perfect for anyone that really wants a high degree of mobility, but also has a need pro for professional grade graphics. Um, the key thing here that is that it's the most affordable and most portable workstation within our lineup. And so this is great if you already have a 15 inch and you know, you're finding yourself on the go more often, you're finding yourself throwing that 15 inch in a bag and, and taking it on trips. If you want less weight, if you want a smaller footprint, we think that this product is for you. It's around 10% smaller than the Precision 3570 and the 3571, so we think that's pretty significant. And that 10% reduction actually refers to a reduction in width and depth. Uh, and it's 6% lighter than the 3570 and 16% lighter than the 3571. 
So as mentioned, the, the 3470 includes that dual opposite outlet architecture, which is going to allow for better airflow within the machine. It's not going to get um, as hot as previous generations when you are running those intense programs um, that you need to in your workflow. I don't want to spend too much time on specific specs because I, I do that in the next slide, but I do think it's worth highlighting here that the product has options for Intel Otter Lake i5 and i7 CPUs and up to NVIDIA T550 graphics. Aside from the discrete graphic options, there's also an offer for integrated Intel Iris XE graphics. So that's an option you have on the 3470. So I'm going to jump around here. There's a lot of stuff, but I want to give you some highlights um, as we likely won't have time to go through everything. Again, the most important thing to point out here is the 14-inch display. This is our newest product in the 3000 series. So anyone that's looking for value, mobility, and performance, this is the product for you. You'll note that it offers a 28-watt CPU stack, 64 gigabytes of DDR5, Gen 4 PCIe, and an NVIDIA T550 discrete graphics option. One of the more practical features, and, and frankly, I think this is one of the coolest features as we talk about mobility, which is very necessary in, these, in this entry 3000 space, is Express Charge. So this is one of our features which allows the user to simply plug in their computer, charge the device for an hour, and receive 80% of their battery life. So we think that's amazing. You know, if you, if you really need to go, but you know, your device is low on power, just plug it in for an hour, pick it up, and you should be good to go for a while. Um, so all precision products include ISV certifications and the 3470, along with the other 3000 products, offer a new click pad, which we're describing as glass-like. And that's just simply on how premium, premium it feels, how responsive it is, and how well texturized it is. So I think this, is a, this might be a good point for us to stop for questions if there are any specific to the 3470 or any uh, of the things that we've covered so far. I think now would be a good time to cover those. I see Mano has been taking some, some questions in the chat. So that's always welcome. Let me see. Do we have anyone on Hojack for, for a live question or if not, no, I'm happy. Yeah, no one on hold at the moment. Um, Manu has been in there. Yeah, all the Ma questions, Manu's but putting like in Carol work. has one. Okay. Yeah, it looks like Carol has a question. Okay, what type of panel is it? And I might have to phone a friend here, either Mono, Alex, or, or Albert, if you all are aware of this. Okay. Hey, hi, Joe. Sorry, sorry to leave you hanging there. I, no worries. I'm um, not certain off the top of my head. I believe it's IPS, but um, that, there, there we go. go. Mon Mon Mono's Mono resident answer. expert, yeah. And, and I should mention with any specific question, also feel free to, if we don't get to it today, to feel free to drop us a line. I know specifically for me, my email address is joe.resendiz at dell.com. So if I don't get to you, you know, feel free to uh, hit me with a direct line and in a few days I should get back to you. Okay, let's, let's keep it moving here um, just because we have a lot of products to cover. Uh, the next product is the Precision 3570. And this product is for anyone that needs a full range of options in the entry stack. It's similar to the 3470, but it's a bit bigger and includes more configurations. And so the goal with this product was really to drive significant performance improvement, introduce RTX graphics that gives you that ray tracing technology, um, and then also just continue to push the envelope as it pertains to sustainability, as I uh, alluded to earlier in the presentation. So here with the 3570, um, similar to the 3470, I'll just jump around, give some key highlights. What we really love about the 3570 is the range of options that it gives customers. We have everything from a lowered power processor with the Intel U15 watt chip uh, to the addition of RTX A500 graphics for those that are looking for higher performance from their GPUs. So here with the 3570, you have the ability to, to go up in terms of what you can do with the, with the precision workstation, or you can also tone it down you know, with that U15 watt chip. So really options is the name of the game here with the Precision 3570. And again, you're gaining an inch of screen size in, in real estate that you don't have on the 3470. So if you're less focused on mobility, um, maybe this is the product for you. We also have DDR4 and DDR5 options available, Gen 4 PCIe. And um, another point of differentiation from the 14 inch here with this Precision 3570 is that it includes an optional 4G Y1 antenna. So um, we think that's great. 
let's move on to the Precision 3571. And this is really the, the big differentiator. If the Precision 3470 and the 3570 have a lot in common, the Precision 3571 has, has less in common with those products. We like to think of our Precision 3571 as the best performing workstation in the entry space. Of course, that's entirely our opinion, but I think if our customers were to use it, they would tend to agree with us. We believe it offers the best price for performance in the workstation landscape. And the 3570, as I mentioned, is kind of a step up in terms of options from the 3470. Uh, but the 3571 is, is a jump up, not just a step. Um, and with that said, you know, here are some highlights. You get the higher powered H45 watt Intel 12th gen chip, and you do have an i9 option. So that's not an option on the 3570 nor the 3470. You get up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5, Gen 4 PCIe. In terms of graphics, you have a plethora of options uh, listed there up to NVIDIA RTX A2000. So you do get that ray tracing technology, but you can also get an A1000 chip or a T600. So a lot of options here with the 3571 as well. The other notable difference is that along with 4G, you do have optional 5G. So a lot going on with the Precision 3571. As I mentioned, this is the one where you're going to find a lot of options, and it's a general performance improvement from the 3570 and the 3470. So that's all I have right now on the 3000. Happy to take additional questions. Let me look at the chat. Seems like Mano might be still putting in a lot of work. Also happy to take additional questions here at this point uh, before we move over to Albert in the 5000 series. Great. Albert, I think the floor is yours. Perfect. Let me go ahead and share my screen then. I apologize for uh, the fact that I'm, I'm looking up into the, uh, into the um, right there for you, um, <laughs> looking at separate screens. So hopefully I'm, I'm looking straight ahead now. Um, so, uh, as, uh, as Joe mentioned, I'm Albert Scovel and hey, I'm Albert, a you yes. might want to swap your, uh, sh your screens. Oh, is it showing your preview screen? Oh, okay. Let's see. Play. Is that better? Yeah, that looks better. Yep. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, so I will, uh, I'll be going. Uh, so I'm Albert Scovel and I'm a product manager here uh, for our Precision uh, 14 and 15 inch um, five series mobile workstations. Uh, today I'll be covering those two devices as well as the 17 inch. So you've already seen this slide once. Um, the uh, the blue there in the middle, that's what we'll be talking about uh, in the next 15, 20 minutes. Um, there's, uh, I don't want to go through word for word everything that's here, but I do want to call out a, a few things here kind of at the top. Of course, you see the big new with the exclamation point on the 5470. That's our brand new 14 inch, which is a um, um, something that we're very excited about to be able to have a thin and light. In, in a moment, I'll, uh, I'll stop sharing and go full screen and show you guys what that looks like on video. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully you'll be able to get a sense for um, really what a great job the engineers here have done in getting that, um, that system down to um, just the absolute kind of smallest and thinnest you can possibly get um, a system and still get full workstation performance out of it. Um, uh, also at the top there, you'll see the, um, the AI logos as well as a VR logo for, um, for one of the systems. So uh, we'll start with the VR. You may uh, be looking at the 5570 specs later and say, hey, I see that you go all the way up to an A2000. If I go and Google it, I know that an A2000 is VR capable. Why can't I do it on this system? And it, um, it really comes down to, uh, to the motherboard design. Um, on the 17 inch, uh, if you have an A3000, um, the motherboard is designed so that you can get direct access to that GPU from your ports. Um, otherwise, um, on the other systems, and if you don't have the 3000 on the 17 inch, 
um, the discrete graphics actually runs through um, the integrated graphics on its way to the Thunderbolt port, which creates um, some lag and uh, doesn't meet the Dell standards for VR. Um, you'll also um, probably notice kind of across the Dell portfolio that uh, if you just look at specs, you may, and then uh, look at your min config specs for your VR headset, um, it may look like something will, will work for VR, but that doesn't mean that Dell is going to certify it for VR. We have a uh, much more exacting standards for that than, um, than uh, the industry overall does. Um, the AI that largely indicates that we have uh, the RTX class graphics, um, which give us the tensor cores, um, which then allow us to, um, to do some of the AI ML workloads that those are designed to, to work with. So I am going to very briefly stop sharing my screen so that you see me in uh, full screen. And I think I'm going to have to um, turn off my background uh, quickly so that they don't turn into ghosts. Um, so you'll just have to forgive my, um, my rowing machine that's in the background that I haven't opened up and used in about a year. So <laughs> let's see, let's turn off my background. Now you can, you can see all the things you shouldn't see in my office, but you can see our new 14 inch um, five series mobile workstation, the 5470. Um, just to give you some context here, if you are familiar with our 15 inch five series and you know that it is already the smallest and thinnest 15 inch mobile workstation on the market and you compare it to our 14 inch here, you can see that there's that massive difference. This 14 inch is really, really small. Um, and if you open it up, uh, you'll see that we did not make trade-offs in terms of in terms of the keyboard. You've still got a full-size keyboard. Um, you've got a little bit smaller um, speaker mesh there, but you have the, actually the same speakers that you have in the uh, the five series or in the fifteen inch behind that mesh. Um, and uh, so we've been able to kind of take that system and really shrink it down and get um, still uh, nearly all of the same features that we have on um, that we have on the uh, the 15 inch. So uh, I'm gonna check really quickly, Alex, is, is everything back to how it should be in terms of me sharing my screen? Yeah, yeah, you're looking good, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, Hey, Albert, we actually have some people in the chat asking about showing a side view so they can see the thinness. Would you be able to, I know you just turned your background on, but would you be able <laughs> to share that real quick? So let me turn it back. I think everyone's just wanting to uh, get a closer look at my uh, my unused exercise equipment, but <laughs> um, let's turn the background back off again. Um, and you can see the side view. And if you compare that, course to the uh, the 15 inch um, one thing that you uh, you may notice is that uh, it's actually on the other side on the 15 inch we only have three USB C and two of them are Thunderbolt ports so the 15 inch there is the bottom and you see you've only on one side you've only got one USB C um, on the 14 inch we actually are designed more similarly to the 17 inch where we actually have two Thunderbolt ports um, through USB C on each side. Um, so we've got four ports total. So um, that's actually kind of an upgrade for the 14 inch compared to the 15 inch. So taking a look at that side view, of course, we're getting we're getting thinner, um, much smaller footprint overall. Um, it's a, a really well designed system that we're, we're excited about. <clears throat> now I will go back to sharing my screen and we can talk a little bit more about it. So one thing you'll notice when you start looking at the specs of the, 50, the 5470, um, if you're looking at uh, those, uh, those systems that I just showed you and you're, you're seeing how small and how thin it is, you're probably saying, oh, well, that looks familiar. I've seen systems that size um, in, uh, you know, from, from other, uh, um, other OEMs. I've seen systems that size from Latitude and, um, they're not workstations for a reason. Um, they, you know, typically have a you know U-class processor. Um, they they're just not uh, not built with performance as the number one um, attribute in mind when you build that small. Um, and there's a reason for that. It's because um, as Joe talked about a little bit, um, thermals really 
uh, determine so much of uh, what you can do with the system. And the smaller the system is, the harder it is to get that thermal energy uh, transferred out of the, um, out of the system. Um, we have fortunately some very, very smart thermal engineers working here at Dell, and they've actually managed to build this very small, um, very thin 14-inch uh, workstation without having to compromise performance. So this is not a U-class processor. This is an H-class processor running at 45 watts. Um, this is not an entry GPU um, running at really low power. This is an, an NVIDIA RTX A1000. And in fact, if you look at a light for light configuration between the, uh, the 14 inch and the 15 inch with that A1000, that A1000 actually performs very similarly and depending on how and what you're measuring, um, very slightly actually outperforms our 15 inch with that, uh, with that GPU. And that's not because the uh, 15 inch is any slouch. Uh, it is a really well built, um, well engineered system uh, the 14 inch, just knowing that we we're going with such a smaller system, we knew we had to make those investments. We put a lot of effort into it and a lot, threw a lot of smart people at it until we got a very small, very thin um, workstation that actually performs as a workstation. So it's really incredible. Um, I know I was skeptical when uh, when our planners first started talking about this system and uh, you can color me um, converted. Uh, this is a, a very good uh, workstation that performs um, absolutely how you would expect it to. Um, one other, uh, there, there are a handful of trade-offs, of course, um, and uh, the, the biggest one, uh, at least for th this generation, is configurability and scalability. Um, you know, on our other systems, for instance, your, uh, your memory is not soldered down, it is soldered down here. Um, so you have a little bit, you know, a few fewer options in terms of what your mix is of CPU, GPU, and, um, and memory. Uh, you do get actually one benefit from it being soldered down, which is that it's a little bit faster running at 5,200 megahertz instead of 4,800 megahertz, which is uh, what our socketed memory is running at. Um, so, uh, and then we also don't go, because of that, uh, that uh, complexity of kind of having things soldered down, we don't go, at least in this generation, all the way up to stack on GPUs. So you can't get um, an A2000 um, on this system, the A1000 is the only GPU that is uh, that is available. But for um, for the vast majority of our customers who are um, choosing uh, these 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 thin and light mobile workstations, um, that 1000 is going to be a really good option. Certainly, there are a lot of customers who, who will need more, um, and we've got options for that. But on this 14 inch, at least for this generation, um, that's that's kind of where we max out. Um, I will take. A, couple of minutes here to talk about the webcam because it was a hot topic in the chat earlier. Um, so just uh, for for some reference, I am currently on a, uh, a 5570, um, which is the same webcam that we have on the 5560, and it's the same webcam that we have on the 5470. Um, it is an HD webcam. It's not an FHD webcam, and the reason for that is that uh, I, with uh, such a small bezel, there is no um, FHD webcam module on the market that actually fits in that bezel. Um, we have made some software improvements. Um, one of the things that certainly will help, and this was mentioned in the chat, is um, is kind of optimizing the lighting in your room to sort of uh, help with uh, with uh, that that webcam performance. Um, but for this generation, um, at least, uh, we are still with that HD webcam um, with some uh, software optimization to uh, to to help uh, help make it. Uh, make it work for you. Um, we talked a little bit about thermal, so I want to show this slide um, for our 14 inch. Um, Joe mentioned uh, briefly the DOO uh, fans that we have. This is Dell patented technology. No one else can use it. Um, essentially what our engineers did was they went and they redesigned what, um, what a traditional or what a standard fan housing looks like and, um, and built it so that you actually have two outlets on either side of the, um, of the fan housing. And what that allows us to do is actually increase the size of the, uh, of the fan inside that housing um, pretty significantly without creating the turbulence that we would normally uh, create in a, in a traditional fan housing. Um, and uh, I, I won't get into all of the math behind it, but uh, the airflow scales cubically from the diameter of our fan, which means that if you, incre you can increase the fan size by about 30%,
you're um, more than doubling your airflow. And so that's what we're able to do with this Dell patented technology with these DOO fans, um, is that we are able to, in a fan housing that's very small, that fits, um, fits inside this very small and thin um, work mobile workstation, we're able to get significantly better airflow than we would be able to get out of, um, out of a more standard traditional uh, fan housing like our competitors use. Um, so really maximizing the airflow. And then on top of that, we've got um, a lot of other thermal investments that we've made with, uh, with vapor chambers and, um, and with uh, uh, use of, uh, of, of gore materials and, uh, and, and graphene so that we can, we can really control and engineer exactly where all that thermal energy goes and doesn't go um, and get it out of the system as efficiently as possible. And that's what allows us to get that performance out of this very small, very thin system is that we um, have just um, absolutely gone bonkers in terms of our, uh, our engineering around the, uh, the thermal technology in the system so that we can, uh, we can get that thermal energy out um, very quickly, very efficiently so that we don't have to throttle your performance. So um, I've got a few more minutes uh, left. I know I, I, I deliberately spent most of my time on the 14-inch uh, the because that's the new one. Um, on the 15-inch, our 5570, uh, this is actually the same chassis as the 5560. Um, a lot of, um, of what uh, goes into the system is the same as the 5560, if you're already pretty familiar with that. Of course, we do have the latest, um, the latest CPUs from Intel. Um, and we have the latest GPUs from NVIDIA. Uh, our GPUs at our 2000 class are actually gonna be roughly, the, it, it's the same GPU that we had on the 5560, but with the new generation, it comes with eight gigabytes of memory instead of four gigabytes of memory. So if you are uh, if you were listening to, me, listening to me talk about the 14 inch and thinking to yourself, well, why would I ever need the 15 inch? Um, here's here's uh, one of the primary reasons um, is that you if you are doing um, a lot of work where you're working with larger models um, and you need that, uh, that greater uh, uh, graphics cache, or if you need that performance of the A2000, um, the 15 inches where you, uh, where you can go to get it. So that's a, one of the primary improvements. If you are in the 1000 class, uh, gen over gen, we've gone from a T1200 to an A1000, which is mean that means that you're getting um, that RTX uh, feature set uh, with the ray tracing and the tensor force. Um, and you're going to get, um, you know, really, really good performance out of that class of, uh, of GPU, um, but significantly better than uh, what we were able to offer on the previous generation. And let me just check the chat. Yeah, Albert, Albert, there is a question in the chat about OLED screen option. Um, so we do not have an OLED screen option. Uh, the reason for that is that um, in the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which we have gone with as our design language for the last few generations on our thin and light, um, more and more we're bringing that into, you know, across the portfolio. Um, the only OLED option in that 16 by 10 um, is not even a 4K, it's a, it's a 3.5K, um, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's good, but not great. And um, we also kind of ran into uh, some issues with the OLED screens um, when we did offer them way back on the 5540, um, there were burn-in issues, there were OS compatibility issues. So um, generally speaking, for the, the sake of kind of, you know, panel quality, panel longevity, because with a, you know, commercial uh, laptop, of course, you expect it to be on for many, many hours a day. Um, hopefully, hopefully not too many, but uh, certainly more than you would expect on, say, a gaming uh, laptop. Um, and so you need that longevity with the, uh, with the panel. Um, you need that, that quality with the panel um, and you need that, uh, that reliability um, and stability when it comes to uh, how it's going to work with your other software. And so for all of those reasons, um, we determined that it was better uh, to, to drop that OLED for now. Um, I know it's something we look at every generation, um, but uh, you know, thus, thus far, it has not made a whole lot of sense for us to, to reintroduce that OLED panel um, on, on these systems. Let's see, uh, are there any other questions that, um, that I may have missed? Okay, um, if not, I will move on to our 17 inch. Um, so our 17 inch is a similar sort of the 15 inch. Uh, it's the same chassis that we had previously. Um, it's um, a, 
a significant improvement, obviously, in screen size with that 17 inch. So if you have uh, users who, who need that screen real estate, the 17 inch is going to get them there. And um, it's going to get them there in a footprint that is significantly smaller than you would expect out of a normal 17 inch. So, um, you know, when we, when we first launched the 17 inch, when you compared it honestly to a lot of 15 inches, it was actually a smaller footprint than those 15 inches. And again, that all comes down to that infinity edge display um, where we get, you know, pretty close to zero bezel all the way around. And that lets us kind of cram a ton of, um, of screen real estate into a very small footprint. Um, and we, we measure that through um, what we call our screen to body ratio. And uh, with uh, this particular system that is 94%, which is uh, far and away better than any of our competitors in terms of getting that screen real estate in as small as possible a, um, a footprint. So similar story on the graphics to what we talked about before, um, except there is no 1000 class on this system. We have a 2000 class and a 3000 class. Um, and with that 3000 class, um, we've gone from six gigabytes of memory up to 12. And with the 2000, of course, as we just mentioned, we've gone from four to eight. So more and more, if you're working with large data sets, if you're working with large models, um, you're gonna be able to use uh, these systems to do that work so that you're able to load all of that data directly you know, into your, uh, into your VRAM and, uh, and not have to deal with the, uh, the bottleneck of, of working with your system memory. And so um, much, much better performance, especially on those, uh, those memory intensive applications. Um, otherwise, um, kind of similar story, uh, it's, it's really on, on this generation all about um, the new CPUs and the new GPUs. Um, Faster memory, we've gone from 3,200 to 4,800 megahertz, and that, of course, is um, is uh, enabled by the new the new CPUs. Um, on this 5770, very similar story on the uh, the thermals to what we already talked about on the uh, the 5470. Um, we've got those DOO fans, we've got the vapor chambers. We just put a ton of work into making sure that we can get um, really full. Uh, performance out of these uh, these systems, despite the fact that we've made them almost impossibly um, thin and uh, and small when it comes to the footprints. Um, do we have other questions around um, the seventeen inch? I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing so that this will all come back up. So um, let's see, Mono, you've answered the question about the pen. Um, let's see, there was a question about the weight, but it's there. It uh, looks, like, uh, looks like we've got uh, most, if not all of these questions answered. I'll run back through the, uh, the chat and catch anything that, uh, that maybe got left open. And um, otherwise, I will hand it over to Alex. Thank you all for your time. Hey, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Albert. Um, and everybody, so first of all, thanks so much for being so engaged in the in the chat. Great to see all these questions. And Mano, uh, thank you absolutely very much for, for helping <laughs> helping answer those questions, monitoring the chat. Um, I do want to kind of come back to the slide that I was sharing before, because uh, I already showed you this um, this this page here um, with you know certain categories of devices, some clouds, some you know potential use cases, recommended use cases rather, right? And, of course, you know, out of 180 or so people on the call, I would say that probably 99.9% .9 are, well, 99% are familiar with the, you know, Dell's naming nomenclature, right? But for those of you who might um, not be aware of it, just in case, I'll just mention the second digit in the model number typically indicates the screen size for mobile devices, right? So if you see a second digit as a six or a four or a five, immediately you know that corresponding that would be a 16 or 14 or 15 inch device. So it's kind of an easy way to easy way to remember that. And then of course the last couple of digits they represent the generation. So as you can see, currently we just you know just refreshed our devices with the um, XX70 or you know in some cases 71, but just seven is a generation here. So anything that ends in a 60 was probably launched before <laughs> something that ends in a 70. Um, as a rule of thumb, there are exceptions of course. And okay, again, this is just for mobile devices and fixed. They might have some couple additional considerations to be aware of, but generally I wanted to stress that. And then of course, because there are so many questions come in the chat about different specs, I actually went ahead to add this slide. Oh, 
let me see if I can switch to it. Yeah, here we go. This slide to the chat, uh, to the screen, yes. And, and um, I'm happy to email this slide to you. So uh, if you are actually gonna put my email address in the chat here right now, uh, so feel free to, I guess, like bookmark it or something, just send me a note to introduce yourself. I'm happy to, to meet, um, to meet um, you know, those two I haven't met before. Um, and um, I'm happy to share this, this, this couple of slides with you as well, just a kind of a quick um, cheat, a sheet as a reference um, in terms of what are some of the specs of this device generally, right? What you can expect. In many instances, I must call out, it's up to, right? So where it says, for example, NVIDIA, um, well, let's talk about 7670, right? Because we're gonna get to it in a minute anyway. Uh, it says uh, A5500, right? 16 gig. It's not just the only card option that's offered on this device. As a matter of fact, we have six different graphics card options, but it kind of, it's the highest in the range, right? So there's gonna be multiple options across most of these devices, but just generally, it's a quick reference guide as to what, what you can be looking at. It has starting weights, it has, you know, dimensions here and there. There are some questions about cameras, SSDs, we included some of it. Um, let me know what else uh, is essential to be included on this one pager. If there are any additional categories, I know their cameras are somewhat different across the model. So maybe that's something we should include kind of going forward, guys. But um, uh, other than that, you know, obviously welcome, welcome those that feedback and, and questions. Um, Excel file. Okay, Matt. Yeah, sure. I mean, can you can you send me a note uh, just so that I kind of I remember it <laughs> um, in the um, to kind of to, to 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 respond to you later on. But we, we can certainly accommodate that. All right. Now that's great. That's great. And um, so moving forward, uh, again, when we talk about new models, new products that they'll launch, right? We um, it typically um, well, I shouldn't say typically, right? But I would say that sometimes those um, Improvements are minor, right? So think of it as an evolution of device. So a couple of things that Albert was talking about or Joe earlier about some of the devices. So it is a similar or the same chassis, same physical body of the product that we used um, on the previous generation device, right? But specs usually be uh, improved as in a newer generation of uh, CPUs, newer generation of graphics, better or faster memory, more capacity, that sort of thing. So think about of it this way. Sometimes those changes are what I like to think of, not just evolutionary, but revolutionary. So when we talk about launching new products like 54.7, uh, 70, our new um, thin and light 14 inch product. I mean, oh, wow, I'm just so impressed. And uh, I'm, I mean, I'm just blown away by looking at what Albert was showing when he was comparing an old, um, like an older, well, I guess not older, but same chassis that we've used on this, uh, uh, 15 inch thin and light versus a 14. I remember about two, three years ago when uh, when we introduced this newer chassis on the 5500 uh, series of products, we were comparing it to something bigger or an older generation 15 inch. And everybody's like, wow, this is just so amazing. So now seeing such an incredible kind of reduction while still maintaining the same qualities of an actual workstation product. So not just a, a laptop, business laptop, but actual workstation, those certified uh, graphics and and there's wonderful wonderful specs it just uh, impresses me a lot and just think about a mobile workstation that's just under one and a half kilograms uh, or you know um, just over three pounds <laughs> it's it's pretty amazing in my books right but of course I'm not going to talk about thin and light I'm going to talk about something else completely but again speaking of revolutionary um, improvements to Dell anniversary portfolio right we're talking about I'm gonna be talking about this new uh, seven series devices. Um, here we go. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna kind of focus on this section um, of our of our presentation here. And so I would like to introduce the new Precision 7670, right? Going from uh, you know in that category we historically had a 15 and a 17 inch device, and we are sort of seeing 16 really emerging sort of as a sweet spot. Um, I've seen some feedback saying, hey, 15 is just a little bit too small. Can we get a little bit bigger? And I've seen other pieces of feedback saying, well, 17 is just a little bit too big and a little bit on the heavier side. Can we get a little bit smaller, <laughs> right? So naturally, naturally, this, um, this evolution or this revolution is happening. Uh, and so we are so excited to introduce, to add a 16-inch product to our stack, to our portfolio. 
Um, and we still have a 17 inch in this category of products. So if you're currently, for example, using a precision um, a 7000 series a 17 inch product, that's not going away. It's still here. Uh, we're still happy to offer that to you. But uh, 16 so far has been, you know, it's been um, a lot of a lot of buzz. That's what really it's all about. Um, so very very excited. Um, again, this high end of performance in mobile workstations, um, in the sort of a portable, more portable than 17 inch. Uh, and of course, it's a brand new chassis, brand new design. And so I'm gonna uh, talk and cover some of those things that have changed, that have improved. I do have a sort of a. Um, couple slides that compare 16 to a 17, what's what's the same, what's different? So I'm gonna show all of those things to you. But of course, we were designing this. When it comes to developing a new precision product, it's always about do not sacrifice performance. So we don't wanna do anything, and I mean anything that harms the performance of the device, right? So when it comes to um, uh, talking about power, it talks about cooling, we take those considerations very seriously. So when we talk about this, um, older 15 inch versus the new 16 inch product, right? That you will see that uh, first of all, it doesn't necessarily mean that the device itself is going to grow much in size. If you look at the dimensions, and that would be kind of the upper side of the screen here, you will see that um, the um, so you have your height, your width, and your depth, right? And so you have your um, X dimension. It's actually getting a little bit smaller. It's a bigger screen going from 15, 6 to 16, uh, but it's actually getting a little bit smaller and it's actually getting a little bit thinner as well. Now, on the thinner side, hold that thought for a minute. I'm going to show you a couple of really, really cool features of the new product in just a minute here. But there is a big reason, again, talking about revolution, right? <laughs> a big reason why it's getting so much thinner. Yeah, I mean, four millimeters doesn't sound that much, but if you consider four, four millimeters to be almost like close to 15%, of the original, of the original width of the device, it's just you know again it's pretty impressive. Of course, in, in some dimensions it has, it had to get a little bit bigger because it's a bigger screen. But overall, that you will see that um, significant increase in the screen to body ratio. So the kind of a side of size of the image you see on the screen as opposed to different like bezels and, and other things. So you know engineering marvel in the sense that the way the antennas are routed, you know now. It, basically requires less space while we still can accommodate those um, better quality cameras like FHD cameras. I know that camera has been sort of mentioned in the chat a couple times already, right, on some of the devices. Uh, and overall that you will see here, especially at the bottom of the or bottom of the screen, like this um, bottom bezel here, it has uh, been reduced significantly. And then the aspect ratio has been changed from 16.9 to 16.10 which means that effectively you get the same number of pixels uh, from left to right, but number of pixels from uh, kind of up to down, you are getting basically, um, what is it, 10% you know, more pixels <laughs> on the screen going from uh, 1920 to 1200 resolution for the, for the FHD screen. And then of course, double that for the, um, for the UHD screen, right? So 38, um, what is it, 3820 by, 2400, something like that, right? So that's that's pretty, pretty, uh, you know, amazing. Again, you're getting better deal, uh, and so you can basically fit more stuff on your screen, and uh, have this better front of screen experience. The way I like to think about it, um, as opposed to what you would have seen kind of in the past on the previous generation devices. And then another thing I do want to call out here is take a look at the uh, at the palm rest. So right underneath the keyboard, you will see that. The size of the of the touchpad, click pad. Um, so the the new generation of these products uh, from the 7000 series, it has moved to click pad as opposed to you know older older technology touchpad. Uh, it is not new to to precision. We saw that sort of um, get adopted on the thin and light product two three years ago, and then it was introduced on the um, entry precision products two years ago, right? And now finally or actually not two years, last year, I think in January of last year, right? And then right now it's finally made it made its way. Um, I absolutely love the bigger click pad that we use on these other devices. So I'm very excited about it because it just, you know, personally, I love it more. Um, it does not have those dedicated sort of clickable buttons, but of course, you know, it's a click pad. So you can still click on the left, on the right to get the same uh, sort of 
functionality. It still supports all the gestures and everything else. Um, if you have it set up in your profiles, for example, um, but it's bigger real estate. So as for me personally, I think it's more convenient. And of course, you know, for 16, 17 inch devices, we still have the, the tanky, the numpad uh, that is not going away. Um, I, um, again, I love to use it when I use different uh, Excel documents. So whenever I'm at the 15 or above screen um, device, um, then I always, you know, I, I like, I like that. When I'm on the smaller device, I do miss that. <laughs> That's for sure, right? And so I've seen some comments here in the comments here in the chat coming about Ethernet. Uh, so RJ, you know, screen aspect ratios. I will touch upon the RJ, right? So it's it's still here. Oh, before I do, right? Let me let's talk about this again. Uh, improvements to the screen. I did address some of these um, in terms of the kind of improve increase uh, real estate. Um, and just generally, like if you compare the left side to the right side, like you are getting basically more, more, more for less, <laughs> kind of um, thinking of it this way, right? Um, yes, RJ is on the side of the chassis. Uh, we are not sacrificing ports, right? So we still want to maintain the same number of uh, sort of number or selection variety of ports. Um, actually, do have it here on this slide. You will see that in the past, we had some ports like RJ, HDMI. And there was like a, a mini DP right on the back of the chassis. Every, uh, on the new uh, design, there are no ports in the back, right? Because again, they're optimized for this air flows and, and just for, for the thinness of the device itself. So there are no ports in the back. However, on the sides, you still get your this. You have this drop down RJ45 as a standard port, right? So you, you, know, you will get that if you order the system. You still have your Thunderbolt ports. You have your USB A as well. You have your um, you have your audio jack on the side, and then on the other side you have your HDMI's. You have more USBs, and you will see that these devices they still support um, barrel type power adapter, and that is different from um, the other Precision devices. Um, so in the three series and the five seven uh, uh, and the five series of Precision devices, you do need to have the um, type C power charger. When this one, uh, you have this barrel type, you can also bring the type C, right? And charge that, but um, with the Thunderbolt ports, but actually even it does require, depending on the configuration you get, it might require quite a lot of power. <laughs> and so that power from Dell today comes in the 180 and 240 watt power adapters. And those are barrel type power adapters. So that is here, still uh, here to stay, right? Going back to this slide for just a minute here, some of the things I already mentioned, uh, but think of it as uh, better, <laughs> right? A lot of the things here, you know, improved screen experience, uh, improved chassis dimensions in the sense that, you know, we're getting it smaller, we're getting it somewhat lighter just to provide it easier for you, for example, the user to carry around. Um, you, we have this optional 4K display. We have a native low blue light support, uh, latest generation of Intel CPUs running at 55 watts. Um, again, this is you know pretty impressive. And then of course the graphics cards. Um, going back to that slide where I think I had the all the specs. Although let me see if I can quickly advance there. Yeah, here we go. You know sometimes oh it's not mentioned here, but sometimes I think like the power requirement uh, or power DDP power for those graphic cards is you know uh, 90 to 110 watt or something something in that range, right? So it's it's pretty. Pretty um, power hungry, I would say. But what is the reason for that? And that, of course, is it's all about performance. This is really, truly the high-end workstation, mobile workstation. It's meant to be able to basically go through those heaviest workloads, those heaviest requirements that you might basically throw at the system um, and get you to your end result faster. So it's not only about saying, well, you know, I, I just want to max out specs just for the sake of it. No, it's really all tied to, hey, I have these applications that I really need to make sure that I can um, minimize the churn, minimize the amount of time I spent rendering, minimize the amount of time I spent working on all of these, um, you know, whether it be developing games, whether it be working with heavy CAD files or, or anything in between. Um, this is really a product to position, really product to shine. And of course here, depending on the configuration, you can get up to three SSD storage options on this device. And then the 17, you can get um, up to four, right? Um, and um, you can get the graphics card, you can get memory, uh, up to 128 gigabytes of memory. And then again, another, you know, in just a minute here, I'm about to, to reveal something really cool for some of you that have not seen this in the past. Um, 
but you know, this is a pretty, I would say on the heavier side, for sure device, um, about two and a half kilograms or, you know, at about uh, starting at five and a half pounds. Um, all right. Um, and um, so it can still be carried around all day. <laughs> Uh, from personal experience, it can get uh, a bit taxing on you if you carry it around all day, uh, but it's definitely great if you are, you know, if, if you need that big screen real estate, if you need those high end configurations, it will, it will perform it there. Um, I already addressed this. You will see that, of course, you know, the design is very, very, well, I shouldn't say very, very different, but it's somewhat different. It is, there are some changes here. You will see that the, the hinges have been redesigned, right? It does flip 180 degrees. Um, open um, so kind of you can lay it flat it doesn't go 360 so please don't try that if you ever get that uh, if you get into that beta tester uh, best beta tester program um, you know be, <laughs> don't don't try to flip them 360 uh, on the test models because we've seen that happen in the past and that is not not always ideal for us we did used to have like a two-in-one device a few years ago but we don't have any two-in-one um, or like 360 rotation at the moment <laughs> okay and so talking about, uh, talking about size reductions, and this is kind of a primary driver of that opportunity to reduce the, the sort of the height of the system, right? Is uh, we are introducing this new technology called CAM, uh, which is basically um, a new, um, I guess, new wave or a new approach to the way we do memory, right? As you know, that the uh, DDR, or DDR format has been adopted since like 1996, right? And there is a big industry um, uh, technology uh, sort of a body that determines some of those specs. So um, JTAC, uh, the council, right? And they, um, you know, we are basically, what we're seeing is in the current sort of a, um, DDR design, uh, sodium design, we are, are very, very close to bumping at the higher end of the kind of a spec limit opportunity, right? So it has been evolving. Every couple of years, we're seeing new kind of improvements. DDR3, uh, you know, was replaced by DDR4, DDR4 replaced by DDR5. But, you know, what happens then? What happens next? Uh, where do we go from, from there? This may not be um, as that big of a concern for a typical business user who just going to run some office applications or some, you know, very light gaming, um, browsing, that sort of thing, watching movies they're not going to hit the, the upper spec of the limit anytime soon. But when it comes to performance users, you know, it, it just come in any day now, right? There's, it's gonna, it might be very difficult to continue innovating in that space. And so Dell developed this new, um, it's called compression attached memory module, right? So that they, basically the way it's done, it's not, it does not utilize in both sides, right? It's just one, one side and, um, um, Mano, feel free to jump in if you want to talk more about the memory and, 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 the, and the designs here, um, just in the sort of, I guess, in the interest of time. Uh, I think that what we need to do really is to have a dedicated webcast just to talk about cam memory. <laughs> I think that's going to be because, you know, there's a really lot to talk about in terms of performance, in terms of the responsiveness speed, in terms of the um, kind of Mm -hmm. the bus speed and many, many other things that go into consideration for memory, right? But, you know, needless to say that this is, you know, we're seeing this as the future. Um, we are, um, you know, trying to make sure that we can communicate those advantages to the users as well. But I would say that for high-end precision workstations, for high-end anything, really, this is definitely, you know, this is where we're heading kind of going forward. However, that being said, for those users who prefer so dim memory, right, the way it is today, um, and or prefer um, just, I guess, they already have, you, if you already have kind of so those dim modules already kind of purchased, you want to bring them from your older device, we're going to have an interposer, like an interconnector, where you can actually um, will be able to utilize that, that the, the sodium memory, you'll be able to buy configurations with sodium as well. So that is um, how we want to kind of bridge that gap until basically everyone is, is really ready to jump into that, into that new CAM, CAM technology, right? Uh, question was in the chat from, from D. Lee. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know your first name, right? But, um, you know, we, about other vendors starting to adopt and start to offer CAM. Hey, we would like to see the two, right? Uh, because I think, you know, what, what uh, you know, the council is, is you know, the, the JDEC 
council is giving us positive sort of reviews right there uh, and just generally it's it's exciting to see how um, to demonstrate that performance improving um, so if you haven't checked it out yet please go and and read more about our chem chem memory on our product uh, pages for for the for the new Dell right um, yeah and again more questions about standardization this is where it's heading right because as as we approach that upper limit of developing sort of DDR um, this is this is really where it's heading okay uh, there was a qu another question here about oh yeah there we go I think this will illustrate it pretty well in terms of the look at the um, how that affects um, the dimensions of the device really compared to traditional so the memory you can actually get more capacity in a thinner effectively thinner form factor that's what allows us to reduce the device um, on the on the on the um, on the unit right and this is how it the rendering of how it would be positioned on the on the board right there um, some of the renderings of the uh, airflows again very critical for higher end workloads right it may not always be as critical for the en entry workstations where it's kind of used for those lighter projects i should say well again quote unquote lighter there's still a work mobile workstation kind of load uh, loads that are being kind of utilized on the device but here you cannot <laughs> afford to throttle right you gotta you gotta make a, have that performance so we have not one but two uh, those dell uh, do offense right um, initially they were sort of positioned on different sides of the chassis and now it's they're brought both but the way the airflow goes it actually able to cover the whole kind of inside of the you know on the board uh, cool all everything that needs to be cooled really well and um, you know that's that's how they kind of sit there um, another improvement this may not really be sort of um, in your sort of consideration your mind Initially, when you think about system improvements, but even getting the uh, power adapter size um, improved by reducing like 10, 20, you know, 25% of the weight, it might be a big deal. Again, think of carrying a device all day with you. And if you have a power adapter in the bag with you as well, you know, losing several hundred, uh, you know, grams <laughs> from your bag by reducing the chassis size and chassis weight by reducing the power adapter weight and size as well. Um, it is a big deal, right? Because it really, really quickly adds up. So we have been able to redesign those power adapters. So depending on, you know, whether you need the 180 or a 240 watt power adapter, and that, again, that is driven by actual configuration, you will see that power adapters are decreasing without sort of compromising on the actual um, amount of power they deliver. So the way I like to think of it is in the past, you know, this old 240 watt power adapter, if you drop it on somebody, <laughs> you're gonna probably injure them. Right now, it's yeah, you will still, you know, it's still still sizable, right? Still pretty heavy, but I mean, it's this, it's not, it's, it's gonna be as bad. Um, all right, and then of course, another thing we had here that was brought up. I do wanna uh, really quickly jump. Oh, I may not have this picture in this deck. Oh, I do apologize for that. But there was a question from D Lee. Um, asking about upgradable SSDs. And yes, they are. I mean, uh, in most of the cases, you might have to open the back cover of the chassis to upgrade um, storage. However, on the 7 Series, uh, one of the things you have, one of the, I guess, optional uh, features that you have is the quick, uh, quick access SSD door. So right in the middle of the chassis where your primary drive would sit, you can order a configuration. Again, it's an optional feature. And so when you order it, you really need to know that this is exactly what I need to order, right? But you can order a configuration where there is a uh, basically like external access to your SSD storage um, for, well, it can be done for a couple of things. It can be done for servicing, right? If you just need to upgrade it, or it can be done for, uh, for I guess, security reasons. If you, um, and again, I would use an extreme example here, may not be necessarily applicable to, you know, high-end workstation per se, but, you find yourself in the middle of the battlefield, right? And you don't want a device with all the information getting to your enemy hand, hands, right? So you can just basically uh, really quickly open the door, remove the device and just drop the like, like leave the actual, like, uh, remove the st storage device, right? Leave the actual chassis there. You know, it's, it doesn't matter because you remove the, you remove the storage um, really, really quickly within seconds. Again, it's, it's not, it, um, you know, gotta gotta call out a couple of things. So first of all, it's not uh, like something that's just gonna open by itself by accident. So your storage definitely is not gonna kind of get into trouble by the door just nearly willy nearly opening. Uh, you have to order that, and there are a couple other features added to make sure that 
it still stays in place, right? So it's it's all kind of taken care of, all thought through. But in some of those, I would say that primarily for you know for rugged for rugged uh, notebooks, that would be you know military <laughs> battlefield example would be a good example, right? For precision, I just think that really for serviceability aspect of it, if you are initially ordering a device with low capacity, something like I don't know. 256, 512, but you know that later you're going to need like a two terabyte drive or a four terabyte drive. Um, absolutely, by all means, you can you can just get that device with that with that quick release door. It will literally take you seconds to upgrade that storage. Or you know, alternatively, you can just open the back cover if you have more than one storage option on the device. That would be the way to go about it, right? That would be the way to do it. Um, okay. All right. I um, I do want to mention, you know, I guess one last thing here as part of my presentation, because I've been focused on this 16 inch uh, simply because it's a, it's a new a new product for us. Um, so <laughs> easy to steal. <laughs> uh, well, when you put it this way, <laughs> right? that's why I said, hey, first of all, it's an optional feature, but also it is um, it is you really need to know, hey, I'm definitely going to uh, I'm definitely going to. Uh, need that functionality right i'm getting it for a specific purpose right i would say that for most users for example if you're an it admin getting it for a fleet of your users it may not be a you know an, a kind of appropriate option for them right but if you're getting a device for your own use and you know exactly why you're going to need that it just it's just one of the options right of course obviously it's going to default to no quick release quick access door <laughs> so i'll put it this way the the leave that's okay <laughs> all right um, oh, now we're talking about the Galactic Empire now. Okay, <laughs> that's great. I like how this conversation is progressing. Honestly, I do. <laughs> um, okay, and so I was talking about the 16-inch product because, you know, again, I'm very excited about this sort of a revolutionary approach to thinking about the, the screen size and, and other things. Um, but we do have an upgraded uh, or updated this evolutionary 17-inch still being shipping, still uh, active uh, part of our portfolio. We have no plans to, to get out of that uh, part of the portfolio by any means, right? So it still has similar, um, you know, similar specs as a as a 16 inch device. Uh, you do have your, this new generation of NVIDIA GPUs, very important, right? Larger click pad, smaller IC adapters. And then of course, when it comes to ca camera technology, you have your um, different options again. These are all different options. It's not just like we have just that one camera. Um, you do, you know, you can look into if you go to, for example, just Google like Dell Precision 7770 or 7670. Uh, the first link usually, usually <laughs> uh, should take you to the Dell.com page uh, to the actual product page. And then there is like description. So when you have these options that you select in the menu, when you configure a device, um, it usually gives you multiple options for like camera. It gives you multiple options for screen, you know, touch or non-touch, um, FHD or UHD, right? So all of those options, they're selectable. Usually there is gonna be some defaults, preset defaults, where we believe the majority of users, um, they can just get that kind of pre-selected, pre pre-built configuration, right? But it, um, you're never gonna be sort of cornered into a specific spec. You can um, just by click of a mouse, just change those specs pretty easily if, you, if you're going to be picking your, your own unit system, right? Uh, but um, those are multiple options. And of course, being somewhat bigger chassis um, than some of what my colleagues were showing actually allows us to have more of those options, like more discrete graphic cards, more memory kind of expansion options, right? More storage expansion options, various size of batteries, again, depending on your use cases, whether you're going to need kind of more storage or you would like kind of a, a longer productivity runtime for your battery, that sort of thing. Okay. And then really quickly, this um, um, last slide, just comparing this new 17 inch versus the new 16 inch, just to show you what's going on there. Um, some of the specs here, aluminum chassis, um, system power requirements, and then power adapter requirements, and then screen options, wireless. I do want to call out that we do have this Wi-Fi 6E, um, you know, really <laughs> better range, faster speeds, everything is great about it. But I also want to mention the uh, optional 5G on this chassis. So if you need a mobile broadband, um, of course, I know that not every country, um, not every, I guess, not every country, not even every state has a well-built out 5G infrastructure. So there might be pockets um, 
that uh, support 5G speeds better than others, right? And there are some countries that are still expecting 5G rollout uh, within the next couple of years. But overall, you know, we've been, uh, we've been uh, again, trying to drive that improved performance, improved um, uh, kind of higher end specs. We recognize that this is where everything is heading, right? If you compare 4G speed, which is already great with 5G speed, um, it just, uh, it's incredible, <laughs> the, 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 the jump in performance. Performance. And so we want to make sure that whether you're going to be using it this year or whether you just want to future prove your system uh, with the chance that you might be using it in, you know, in a year or two, that the systems are well equipped to handle that. So when it comes to upgradability, when it comes to um, you know, just having in general, having those antennas within the chassis, uh, providing uh, opportunity to upgrade your memory or providing opportunity to upgrade your storage, this is what 7 Series is really all about. And so we're very excited to present these new systems to you today. Thank you. I'm going to stop here and see if you, know, if you have any additional questions. Uh, I do see that the conversation in the chat has already completely derailed now, <laughs> talking about, uh, you know, <laughs> now we're full, full speed Star Wars discussion, right? <laughs> so, all right. That's great. Thank you all. Wow, uh, I got I got to make sure that we add those quantum uh, compute and death star callouts in my one pager for the product. So Lawrence is asking um, about uh, current CPU slash system availability. Uh, are you looking for specific model numbers, Lawrence? Is that what the question is? And so while, while Lawrence is, um, yeah, just availability in general. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, so there have been, especially, yeah, you, uh, you're right, on the, on the, um, on this new 16, 17 inches, uh, we were initially targeting to launch this all in May timeframe. Um, it was later postponed to July, right? So depending on how long you've been waiting, you might see definitely see those several weeks of, of delay. We do see um, sort of supply uh, improvement on the horizon, right? So we should be able to clear the backlog completely. Um, I wanna, so again, this is aspirational, please don't quote me on that. <laughs> but aspirationally, we're looking into that supply situation improving completely by October. But even until then, it doesn't mean that everything is gonna be on hold. We have started shipping already and we're just trying to get them out the door as soon as possible. Um, of course, you know, given, you know, the last two years uh, they've been and obviously, just like everybody else, I hate to play this card, but there have been supply challenges, as you're aware, in the IT industry. Um, but um, we're seeing those units getting out at the door now. And so we um, have a line of sight right now to, to, to improve that. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah Norman, Alex, yeah, sorry. It looks like, oh, looks like we got one more question and then okay. uh, we'll wrap it up. So the one yeah. question from Zane is, um, how does the performance of the XPS 13 Plus compare to the Precision um, 5470? So I'll jump in on this one. Um, I'm, I, I would have to double check. Yeah, there we go, Mono. You've got the, that, that's the, the high level answer. It's not even close. I'm not sure, sure exactly what the specs on the PS13 look like, but we I do know they don't have the uh, professional graphics um, and they don't have the same level of thermal enhancements and thermal investments that we have um, on the Precision 5470 to, um, to be able it's to go and drive that performance. It's not even the same level of processor. Okay, so yeah, I, I didn't want to say that out loud because I wasn't certain, but I was pretty sure it was not an H-class processor. It, it's not even close. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the 5470 performs closer to, um, uh, and outperforms, like you mentioned, the 15 inch, uh, 13 inch um, uh, XPS um, is a consumer system, um, not designed for professionals. Um, I, I see now there's a question about the comparable new latitude. Um, again, no. Um, no, la not even <laughs> close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> latitude also doesn't, um, I, I actually don't believe the latitude has any H class processors <clears throat> anymore, uh, starting with this generation. Uh, so they, they don't have the, the same level of uh, processors. They're running at uh, 
15 or 28 watts versus 45 watts. Um, the highest graphics you can get on a latitude is like a, an, I think it's an MX550. It's a, a very entry, like 15 watt consumer card um, compared to um, our um, A1000, which runs at, um, I believe it's up to 40 watts. Um, so, and it's a you know professional card with uh, with RTX and um, and uh, so it's it's very very different um, <laughs> um, and 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 that's that's not to uh, to 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 talk trash about the Latitude. Um, the Latitude is a great great system for the customers who should be using Latitudes. Um, but as far as performance goes, they're very di very different, built for very different uses. Just to add one thing, the uh, Precision fifty four seventy is the smallest thinnest 14 inch notebook period in Dell's portfolio. It's actually smaller, thinner than and almost any 14 inch on the market today. And it's the only one with the performance characteristics that we have in the 5470. Nothing even comes close in that size. And if you look at competitors in the workstation market, their, 50, their 14 inches um, are only entry systems. They do not have, um, they do not have a thin and light or a performance focused uh, 14 inch in their platform in, the, in their portfolios. So, um, you know, it's it's certainly the uh, <laughs> the smallest thinnest mobile workstation, um, you know, anywhere in the universe.